G'day all, and welcome to another C++ shoot. So we've finally made it all the way to classes and objects. Uh, we looked a little bit at structures last time, but we didn't look at them in detail because most of the stuff for uh, classes and objects is applicable to structures as well. So objects are really similar to structures, only they also have functions attached to them. And they're basically just a collection of variables called member variables and functions called member methods. Uh, structures can have methods as well, but we're not really going to talk about that, so... Yeah, good. Uh, I like to think of variables as being things that the objects own or have, and I like to think of the methods as being things that the objects can do. And there is a third aspect to object-oriented programming, which we're not going to go into, and that's inheritance. Or well, we won't go into it in this shoot, anyway. Okay, encapsulation. So, encapsulation refers to hiding the details of how objects work and interact. Uh, we don't want to mess about with hundreds of intricate lines of code every single time we want to do something, because we'll make mistakes. We're human, us programmers. And, uh, you know, we'll put in typos and we'll change things that we shouldn't and we'll basically just confuse each other. So what we do is we encapsulate it. We hide the details of the way the objects work from ourselves and from other programmers on the project. Yeah, we hide them. Uh, for instance, if you imagine a car, uh, to drive a car you've only got to push your foot down on the accelerator. Uh, you know, you've got a key as well, but basically you just put your foot down on the accelerator and thousands of little gears and pistons and flywheels crankshafts cams and integrated circuits all sorts of things leap into action and make the car run but we don't usually care about any of those things all that we care about is pushing our foot down on the accelerator so the inner workings of the vehicle would be encapsulated they'd be hidden and the the public workings or the things that we can interact with are things like the accelerator and the you know the ignition and that sort of thing so this abstraction, this hiding things from ourselves so that we don't accidentally change them, is called encapsulation. Uh, there is another use of the word encapsulation in object-oriented programming, but this is the big one. This is the big, yeah, big definition of it. Uh, encapsulation is also, you know, probably the most important concept in OO. It's what object-oriented programming is all about. Alrighty, before we can make an object, we've got to declare what it's going to be like. And we declare what it's going to be like using the class keyword, in much the same way that we declare the structure. And classes are descriptions of objects, they're not the actual objects themselves. They're like a, br a blueprint, a recipe for making an object. And after we've made a class, we can make thousands of objects from it, from the same blueprint. Um, okay, so this is back to encapsulation. This is how, this is how um, we specify that things are hidden. Uh, we mark parts of the class as being private, public, or protected. And these are called access modifiers because they change the way that the data or the methods can be accessed. So the first one, private, means that only the objects themselves are in control of this. So these things are the, the inner workings of the object. And these are the things that we want to hide from ourselves, basically. Uh, these would be like the cams and the pistons and that sort of thing in the car's engine. This is how the object works. And only the objects themselves can call those methods and manipulate those variables. Okay, the other one is public, and this means that anybody, this is other objects or the main method, uh, anything can manipulate these variables or call these functions. So these are public uh, member variables and public member methods. And these are the external things. These are the things that we set up so that we can interact with our objects. And these would be things like the accelerator pedal in a car, or the windscreen wipers. Uh, there's also protected, which we'll look at when we do uh, inheritance, a little down the track. Good, good. So, uh, the syntax. You start out with the class keyword, followed by the name of your new class, bird. In this example, my new class is called bird. Uh, you then place a code block, that's curly brackets, and the actual class blueprint is specified between the curly brackets. Yeah, it is, rather. Uh, you can place as many private and public sections as you like, and C++ assumes private if you don't put anything. Yeah, and then you fill in the class with member variables and methods you need. So this is actually uh, one of the only differences between structures and classes, is that classes are private by default and structures are public. Anyway, we're not talking about structures, so let's just move on, shall we? Uh, oh yes, if you're coming from a um, Java or a C-sharp background, 
Uh, be careful because at the end of a class, what's this, declaration? There's a semicolon in C++. Yeah, just try to remember to put that there. Okay, member variables. Uh, member variables can be any of the data types, including the basic ones like ints or floats or doubles, your bools, your chars, anything you like. But they can also be things that you've defined yourself, like structures and even other classes. Yeah, so we build bigger things from little things. It's like the Paul Kelly song. Um, okay, so here I've just declared two little integers. One of them is uh, height, and it's private, and one of them is color, and that's public. So from the main method, we would be able to set color. We could just say, you know, some bird dot color equals 50. Uh, but we wouldn't be able to set height. Only the birds themselves can set their own height by growing, presumably. Um, yeah. Okay, declaring member methods is a little bit more complicated. Not too much, though. Uh, it's usual to place the declaration of the member methods inside the class themselves, but define the body of the method outside the class. Yeah, it is usual to do that, and it actually means something else to define a member method within the class. That means inline it, but we're not going through that now, so... Yeah, this is what you do. Void flap wings, open close curly brackets, so you put your parameters in there. Uh, this one's got no parameters, so it's just got a semicolon. So that's just a declaration, that's not the actual member method. And I've also got a public member method called fly. Um, so the private method couldn't be called from main. If we made ourselves a bird called sparrow, uh, we couldn't tell it to flap its wings. Nope. The only thing we could tell it to do would be to fly. And the sparrow itself would have to choose to flap its wings. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is how you define the member method outside the uh, body of the class. Um, you can see you know, at the top, the uh, declaration of the class, we've got our two member methods, flap wings and fly. And underneath that, I've got the um, actual definition of those member methods. So flap wings and fly. And one of the biggest differences between C Sharp and C++, C++ member methods are normally defined, yeah. Yeah, again, if you're coming from a C Sharp or a Java background, uh, you might be used to defining member methods within the class itself. But we don't do that in C++, usually. Sometimes you do. But um, usually you don't. Usually you do it like this. Um, this is the scope operator just here. Yeah, two semicolons. So these two semicolons just here mean that flap wings isn't any old function. It's the function belonging to bird. So bird is the class up here, and we promised in the class of um, in the class's declaration we promised that we would somewhere specify flap wings, and we also promised that we would specify fly. And this is how we specify it: we say this is the flap wings belonging to bird, and we also say down here that this is the fly belonging to bird. Uh, so you can see in here the way that we call this um, private member method from within uh, a public method of bird. Uh, this is how the um, private methods are called. So the bird itself can call flap wings, but we couldn't call flap wings from the main method. Uh, likewise, we also see here that within the bird's method itself, um, we can change the private variable, height. We can do something like this, height plus plus. But you couldn't change the bird's height from the main method, because it's private. Okay, making an object. This is the final thing before we get to a little bit of coding. Uh, if you want to make an object uh, after you've got that class declaration and you've specified its uh, member methods and member variables, um, it's just a normal data type, basically. So you do something like this, bird sparrow. And this would make a new bird, an actual instance of the uh, class called sparrow. And then once we've got that in RAM somewhere, uh, we could tell it to fly with sparrow.fly. Easy as that. Uh, yeah, so Sparrow would be called an instance or an object, and Bird is the class. Uh, the instance or the object is an actual little chunk of RAM inside the computer somewhere, where it's going to store the bird's height, the Sparrow's height somewhere. Yeah, the class doesn't actually take up any RAM. Uh, it's common to deal with objects that are pointers, but we'll look at this one. Yeah, we will too. We'll look at pointers and that later. Okay, over to a bit of C++. Uh, I've got Visual Studio 2012 open. Let's make that little bird class. So class bird, don't forget the semicolon, 
private uh, int height and public. What did we have? It was void fly. We also had a private method called flap wings. I'm actually also going to add another method, and that's reset. Okay, because we want to be able to set our height to zero initially. Uh, usually you'd use what's called a constructor, but we haven't looked at that yet, so we'll just use a um, public member method. Alrighty, so now we better define flap wings and uh, reset and fly. So void bird, then the scope operator, flap wings, just like that. And I might say height plus equals rand mod 100. Okay, so when the bird flaps its wings, its height um, gets some value from 0 to 99 added to it. He flaps his wings and he flies higher. That's pretty good. Good class. This is cool. Void. Reset. Settle down. You've got to put the scope operator in. Okay. Whoa. Okay, so reset is a public member variable of bird. But since it's a member variable of bird, it can set the height to zero. And I'll use that because if you don't set the height to zero, um, the height will be whatever happened to be at the spot in RAM that the computer chooses for our new birds. It'll just be a random value, so that's no fun. Oh, it is a bit fun, but not for today. Um, flap wings. Okay, there's our class. We've got three little uh, member methods. You often see the um, braces over here. I don't know, I'll do that one. I'll... Who cares when I do that? Okay, let's make a bird. Bird sparrow. Okay, so we've got ourselves a blueprint, the class just here, called bird. And now I've just made a bird called sparrow. So we can tell that bird, sparrow.fly. We can tell him to fly. This is going to be really cool. So actually, we might reset him first. Sparrow.reset. Okay, initially we want to set his height to zero by telling him to reset. Uh, if we just put a breakpoint there, you know, if you left click in the uh, margin, it puts a breakpoint there. We click on uh, local Windows debugger. Uh, we'll see that Visual Studio actually helps us out by telling us about Sparrow. So if we hover over the word there, we can see um, Sparrow height equals some random value that happened to be in RAM when it created the bird. So that's no good to us. If we hit F11, um, that's step into. So we see the little yellow arrow jumps up here to bird reset. And this is actually the sparrow's reset just here. The sparrow is resetting himself. So if we had a thousand birds, every single one of them would be able to call its own reset function. And every single one of them would be able to reset its own height value, which is completely independent of all of the other birds' heights. Okay, there it did. So the Sparrow now, if we hover over it, has a height of zero. And if we step into the next uh, line with F11, it's going to go into the Sparrow's fly function. And the only instruction there is flap wings. So he's chosen to do that himself. It'll jump straight to the flap wings function. And right here, he's going to flap his wings and add to his height. Oh, Struth, settle down. I stepped into um, Rand. <laughs> which I didn't really want to. Okay, so if we hover over it again, after it's come back from the uh, fly member method, we can see that he actually set his height to 41. Good stuff. Nice flying, Mr. Sparrow. Okay, so that's pretty cool, but the other really good thing that you can do is we could easily make, and this is, this is really where object-oriented programming comes into its own, you can easily manipulate massive amounts of uh, data. So we could say flock of sparrows just like that and make an array of sparrows called flock of sparrows or oh, sorry an array of birds called flock of sparrows and that array has got a thousand and twenty four birds in it every single one of that thousand and twenty four has its own height every one of them can flap its wings reset and fly no worries so we could do for int i equals zero while i is less than thousand and twenty four i plus plus um, 
I'll just copy this. I dot reset. Okay, so that little for loop just there is going to call reset on every single one of the birds, one after another. Then we can do for int i equals zero, while i is less than 1024, i plus plus. What braces? <laughs> um, block of sparrows, i dot fly. Okay, now this is going to be excellent. I think anyway, this is going to ask every single one of those 1024 sparrows to fly. But you know, the interesting thing is that every single one of those sparrows um, will flap its wings and choose its own height. So we don't know what they're going to be. We could make them, yeah. If I just hit play, it should have a, because I put a breakpoint there on the return. If I hit play, we should be able to see the heights that they chose. Uh, there it is. So, oh yeah, let's just... Okay, there we go. So, uh, sparrow number 0 chose a height of 41. Sparrow number 1 chose a height of 67. Sparrow number 2 chose 34, then 0, then 69, 24. There you go. So, every single one of the 1024 birds is now keeping track of its own height. And that's what object oriented programming is all about. Really, really cool. Uh, anyway, you won't be able to make this too big because this array is actually being declared on the stack and the stack's really limited, but later on we'll look at how you might make like a million birds if you wanted to. Yeah. Anyway, that's just a little introduction to classes and objects. There's a lot more really exciting stuff on this topic which we'll look at in the future. Alrighty, thank you for listening. See you later.